Hey guys, welcome back to Cyber Platter. Today we will discuss cross-site scripting. Cross-site scripting is a web security vulnerability. Imagine this as a trick played on a website. Let's say there is a website. Say this is a blog saying www.example.com. This blog allows users to leave comments on various articles. So this blog has a lot of articles and you can leave comments on this users who are visiting that blog. The blog allows HTML in the comments to enable users to add formatting such as bold text or hyperlinks. So if there is a user who wants to leave a comment which is harmless, can just write, I really enjoyed this article. Thank you so much for sharing. But if there is an attacker, they can inject a malicious script into their comment. Like for example, so this is the script that is injected, which is a malicious script to redirect users to a phishing site. It has windows location href is equal to https fake login page.com. Okay, now another user reads the blog post and sco scrolls through the comments. When this user, the victim, encounters the attacker's comment and click on the seemingly innocent link, maybe he has posted the link saying, check out this link for more information, the attacker, right? So if this victim or user clicks on that link, this embedded script runs in their browser, redirecting them to a fake login page designed to steal their credentials. So cross-site scripting is a type of security vulnerability that occurs when attackers inject malicious script into web pages viewed by other users. This can happen when a web application does not properly validate or sanitize user inputs before rendering them on a page. The injected script then gets executed in the context of the victim's, victim's browser, allowing the attacker to steal information, manipulate the appearance of the page, or perform actions on behalf of the user. There are many different types of cross-site uh, scripting attacks. Let's see them one by one. First one is stored cross-site scripting attack or persistent XSS. So this is a type of cross-site scripting attack where the malicious script is permanently stored on the target server, you know, often in a database or other data storage system. The injected script is then served to users whenever they access a particular page, view specific content or interact with the affected application. Let's consider another example. This is a social media platform where users can post comments on each other's profile. So now an attacker comments something like this. So this is a malicious script to steal user cookies and send them to the attacker. This script when stored in a comment becomes part Part of the page's content. Now, every user who views the attacker's comment inadvertently executes the script, resulting in their cookies being sent to the attacker's domain. Next type of cross-site scripting uh, attack is reflected cross-site scripting attack or non-persistent cross-site scripting attack. Here, the injected script is not stored on the target server, but it is rather reflected of a web application. The malicious script is embedded in a URL, a form or any other input mechanism and then it is reflected back to the user by the web application. Suppose there is a search feature on a website that echoes the user's query in the search results. Now an attacker sends a phishing email containing a link like this. When the victim clicks the link, the script is reflected in the search results and the browser executes the script, displaying an alert with the message XSS. This is a reflected cross-site scripting attack. Next type of cross-site scripting attack is DOM-based cross-site scripting attack. DOM stands for document object model. Here the vulnerability is exploited through the manipulation of the DOM document object model in a 
uh, web page. In traditional XSS attacks, it involves the server reflecting malicious content in its response. But DOM XSS does not necessarily involve the server reflecting malicious content in its response. Instead, the attack occurs on the client side and it is within the victim's browser. And this happens by manipulating the DOM elements through the client side scripts. So DOM is a programming interface for web documents. It represents the structure of a document as a tree of objects where each object corresponds to a part of the document such as elements, attributes and texts. The DOM provides a way for programs to interact with and manipulate the structure, style and content of HTML, XML or XHTML documents. Now let's look at an example. Suppose say an attacker injects a malicious script into a web page often through user inputs or other client-side interactions. Let this be the malicious script. So this web page uh, dynamically updates its content based on user inputs in the URL. The injected script manipulates the DOM, causing unexpected behavior in the rendering of the web page. So the JavaScript in the URL manipulates the DOM when the page loads, potentially leading to security risks or unexpected changes in the page's behavior. So this is an example of DOM XSS. Another type of cross-site scripting attack is blind XSS or second order XSS. Here the injected malicious script does not directly impact the user who triggers it. Instead, the script is initially stored on the server and its effects are delayed until a different user interacts with a specific component or action. Let's look at an example. So first the attacker injects a malicious script into a web application this is typically in a location where user generated content is stored, like for example, comments, messages or user profiles. Then the victim, he might be a different user, interacts with the component or action that triggers the execution of the stored script. So consider an online forum where users can post comments. An attacker injects a malicious script into their own comment. So this malicious script the attacker injected is to steal user cookies. This comment is initially harmless to the attacker, but later when an admin or somebody with higher privileges views the comment, the script executes with their privileges, potentially leading to the theft of sensitive information. Now let's look at some XSS prevention techniques, how to prevent this attack. First, input validation and sanitization. So you need to validate and sanitize all user inputs to make sure that they do not contain malicious scripts. Input validation checks user inputs against expected formats and patterns, while sanitization removes or neutralizes potentially harmful characters. Next, output encoding. You need to properly encode and sanitize user-generated content when displaying it on the website. So encoding converts characters with special meanings in HTML, JavaScript or other contexts into their respective HTML entities. This prevents them from being interpreted as executable code. Next is content security policy. You need to implement and enforce a robust content security policy. CSP is a security standard that helps control which resources such as scripts, style sheets or images can be loaded and executed on a web page. It provides an added layer of defense by preventing unauthorized script execution. Next is HTTP only cookies. You need to set the HTTP only flag on cookies to prevent JavaScript access. This reduces the risk of session hijacking through uh, cross-site scripting attacks as the cookie cannot be accessed or manipulated by client-side scripts. Next, secure development practices. 
You need to follow a uh, secure coding practices uh, and use frameworks that inherently provide protection against cross site scripting vulnerabilities. You need to regularly update and patch software to address security vulnerabilities. Next, use frameworks and libraries. Leverage security features provided by modern uh, web frameworks and libraries. Many frameworks include built-in protection mechanisms against common security threats, including cross-site scripting. Next is, you need to conduct regular security audits, both automated and manual, to identify and address potential vulnerabilities in the application code base. Automated scanning tools can help detect common security issues. Next, education and awareness. Train developers, administrators and users about the risks associated with cross-site scripting attacks. Educate them on secure coding practices, recognizing phishing attempts and following security best practices. Next, implement a web application firewall that is a WAF to filter and monitor HTTP traffic between a web application and the internet. WAFs can help detect and prevent various types of attacks, including cross-site scripting attacks. Next, browser security headers. Use security headers like content security policy, X content type options, and X frame options. To enhance the security of web applications, these headers provide additional instructions to the browser on how to handle certain aspects of the context. So that's it about cross-site scripting, guys. I hope this video helped you understand cross-site scripting, how it works, why is it so dangerous, what needs to be done to prevent it. If you like today's video, please don't forget to like, subscribe and share our videos. That helps us a lot. I will see you in another video with another cybersecurity topic. Until then, take care of yourselves. Bye-bye.